Good afternoon, good afternoon, the world. I hope you're doing great. And let us know where you're joining us from. Today, I have an absolutely phenomenal, wonderful lady, my dear, dear friend, a lady who actually is having a couple of titles which are quite loud and profound. And today, we'll be speaking about re-entering anxiety. But let me introduce my dear guest before we go into this amazing topic, something that we all should be aware about. So, Linda Sage is my guest today. And here it is about Linda in a few words for you to get to know my awesome guest. Living and working around the world as a criminal psychologist, can you imagine? A lecturer, author, a podcaster, speaker, and a broadcaster. Couple of your titles, right? Didn't save her from a burnout through the accumulated pressure of work, caring for the elderly, parents, and a daughter of the autistic spectrum. So many people probably can relate to this pressure, right? But Linda fortunately came back from the brick with a six-year battle. Since 2011, she has been passionately empowering people to take more of self-care. And her favorite motto is, self-care is not a luxury, which I think is such a profound profound motto. Linda, I'm so happy to have you back in my studio again. It's such a pleasure and delight to be with you today on my live show. Thank you for coming. Oh, Olga, it's a wonderful pleasure. Thank you so much for reminding me to be back. And it's lovely. Yeah, we, you know, both of us in the last time, we've come so far. And so uh, it's great to be back with you. Oh, it's such a pleasure, such a pleasure. And you see, I always admire you for how proactive you are. I think last time we had a conversation, I, I said it to you openly as well. I wish I would be like yourself at, uh, at your 20s, because I'm sure you're 20, right? <laughs> at your 20s, because you're so proactive and you're so giving. I love how much you give back to community. This is so amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate that uh, in my life, I really don't feel like I have worked many days at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been such a pleasure, such an honour, and uh, you know, learning so much. I mean, the thing with psychology is you, when you're giving, you get so much back. You, don't, you, know, you get far more back than ever you seem to be putting out for other people. Absolutely. You are so right. The transformation which you are creating for other people is just giving back to you in one way or another, but you doing good to others is always coming back. Well, and that's why I'm so happy that today's topic, which you chose to talk about, is re-entering the anxiety. So do you want to tell us a bit more about why we should be aware about this topic, re-entering the anxiety? Well, Olga, as, as we all know, life in the last 15 months has been something that none of us have ever known, and nobody absolutely nobody has got the answers for it. Uh, Re-entry anxiety actually goes back to probably before a lot of you were actually born, back to 1961, when the first astronauts were going up into space. And when they came back down to uh, uh, Earth, they found it quite difficult to actually get back into a, a normal lifestyle again. And if you think about it, the last 15 months, then we've been locked down, we've had uh, control taken away from us, we've had uh, all sorts of changes within our roles, our environment and relationships. So this now, we're opening up, people have started getting really, really anxious. A lot of people that I've worked with have worked all the way through, but now it's about other people perhaps going back into the workplace. Members of your family going back into schools, you know, now they've taken the masks off and you know, coming home and the anxiety of building up of, again, the unknown. So it's about taking that anxiety and turning it into the potential, the power of moving forward. Because one thing's for sure, we can't go back. You know, no. It's such a waste of time. The what ifs, the maybes, if onlys, you know, let's get back to normal. We are never going back to the normal that we knew before. Now it is a new normal. So getting ready for that and being prepared for it is so important. Yeah. It's it can you can look at it as scary, but you can also look at it as exciting. So making that change of that that mindset is just about saying, right, come on, bring it on. Let's see what and go for it. 
Wow, Linda, I must say that's why I love you because your mindset is so spot on. It's so spot on and it comes, it almost like it's it's within the time. It's it's like we are so technologically advanced as a society, and yet majority of people are still living in all days of the mindset and thinking. And I love how advanced your mindset is. My favorite quote there was we can't go back. It is not possible. Our hair cannot grow back. Cells on our skin cannot grow back. How do you plan to go back? It's physically not possible. Let's go forward. Let's create new normal. Love that. Love that. Thank you, Linda. You know, I think everybody needs to hear this message. By the way, if you're joining us right now, please do let us know where you are based because I would love to make sure this message gets around the world. You can't go back. You can only go forward. But Linda, how do we go forward in that case? It's about looking at your mindset because if you're always, you know, we send uh, people out into space. We're going to Mars. We're doing all sorts of things. But there's seven inches of space that are so important to us, and that's between ear and the ear. You know? And once we conquer that, our life is our own because the times that we're trying to control everything out and beyond us is such a waste of energy. So coming back, reconnecting with yourself, because I ask an awful lot of people what they don't want in their life, and they can write me pages. But when I ask them what they want in their life, we might get one or two things, or you know, they'll say one thing and then it'll turn back to what they don't want. So the easy formula for doing this is if you write down what you don't want in your life and you can't think what you do want in life, just reverse it, flip it over. Like you know, if you're saying, I don't want to be late, what do you want? I want to be on time. You know, I don't want to be in debt. So what do you want? I want to be financially secure, I want money in the bank. So looking at and focusing on the things you do want, you can move forward on a pathway to that. All the while you're looking at the things you don't want, these are the things that are holding you back. If we were driving a car, and you're looking always in the rear view mirror, it's not if you have an accident, it's when. And this is exactly the same principle. So reconnect with yourself. What's important to you? It might not be the same as it was even 15 months ago. You know, it can be something completely different, but that's fine because it is you. You cannot do this for somebody else or on behalf of somebody else. Your journey is yours. Love that, love that, love that. And when, if not now, when, if all these 15 months, we had greatest opportunity in the world to have more time for ourselves. Didn't we say before the lockdowns in Plurid started that I wish to have more time to declutter my house? I wish to have more time to read more or I wish to have more time to walk more, right? We had all this time. If you haven't done it so far, rediscovering yourself, learning more about yourself, changing the way you speak, just like Linda said right now. If you wish for something, start thinking opposite to what you're getting now. Right right now is your time. When else? Some countries are still in the lockdown. We are just about to get out of the houses. Use this time wisely. Oh, I think it's so hard. Thank you so much, Linda, for these tips. And I really love the way how easy it can be done. As you're saying, whatever you don't want, just make it opposite. Yeah. That's it. Just make the opposite. Love that. Love that. But what was your biggest discovery about yourself? Because surely you use this time very wisely as well. So what was your biggest self-discovery to this lockdown's time? Oh, my goodness. Uh, probably so many. Um, my capability for technology. I mean, my, my age group, <sighs> technology doesn't come normal. Um, I've always been involved in radio and things like this, but I've always been in the studio and there's been a techie, although in the last part, uh, before COVID, I was actually learning about doing the, all the, the controls and that in the, the studio and things like this. But coming uh, out and broadcasting from home, uh, so we've been virtual for um, right until last Sunday. So it was, it was actually 14 months point. So coming out and setting up a sound tent, being able to do the um, link through and being able to do interviews live and things like this. I've really, I, I think I set my limits on my boundaries for this 
again, you know, I should know better because anything you set your mind to, you can do. You can, you know, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. Uh, it's a very old saying from Henry Ford, and it is so true. And, and that was one area that I limited my belief to think, oh, well, perhaps I'm not as competent with this. But it's not that I wasn't competent. It was I hadn't developed the skills. So now I've developed the skills. I do my videos. I edit them. I put them up. I do all sorts of things that uh, I never thought. And going back onto, into the studio on uh, Sunday, I actually did it all myself from the studio. So it was, it's a phenomenal, again, it's about not putting those limits. And it could be on something like that, you know, something that you want to do. It could be on relationships. It could be on money. It could be whatever it is. You know, change that view about yourself and see yourself in a different light. If you see yourself as a can do, you will do. I love that. If Linda did that, so can you, surely. And, and I do understand when you say my generation people, even though in my eyes you still have about 20 plus many years of experience. But I do know what you mean, my age of uh, generation of people. Because if I, for example, take my mom, she, she, she clearly cannot use anything to do with a computer or, you know, like high technology. She is not. And I remember when I said to her mom, you need iPhone, right? You need a smartphone so we can talk to each other on the video call rather than the phone call. She was like refusing that. And then I just simply bought her phone and uh, for her birthday and, and I took away her old phone. So she was forced to use it. Guess what happened? Now she is all over Facebook. She's posting videos. She's doing some little, um, you know, descriptions of what she's doing or what she's cooking or what she she's gathering. She's so busy with her technology now. But it just shows the example that it's never too late. It's never too late. But if you want to learn something, embrace the journey, just like Linda did, and just do it. Just do it because it is about what do you want to achieve. And you can if you believe in that. My, my moment a, a, a week or so ago, we were in doing a, a, a meeting within the, the, the local area that we do for the community. And there was a lot of young people there and we were talking about uh, different things. And I was talking about Clubhouse. And these youngsters didn't know about Clubhouse. So I <laughs> about it. I was sending them invites to come on and join Clubhouse. And yeah. it's just, oh, you know, that, you know I'm, I've, because of the environment I'm, I'm with and the people are using that, and it's like everything else, you don't know what you don't know. So until somebody brings it to your attention, then you can know it. So you know, it is about very simple steps. The, the smallest change makes the biggest difference. That's very true. And how interesting, Linda, don't you think it's so bizarre how society usually will be highly aware about the newest television coming out with the best pixels with the best speakers built in i have no clue about this stuff because i don't even watch television in fact i don't even have television in my living room right but when it comes to self-improvement when it comes to self-discovery when it comes to changing something about yourself very often people can't be asked you know it's so much easier for them to find out something about the latest t TV or the latest game console and to be aware of all these parameters and whatever else is in there rather than what can I improve within myself? How can I better myself? And this always kind of puzzles me. Yeah. Why do you think, Linda, society is still holding themselves back from that growth, from, you know, that rapid growth in terms of being in tune with the change in the world? Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I always forget that you haven't got a TV either because most people think I'm the only person on the planet that doesn't have a TV, uh, especially when I'm working in, in, if I'm in prisons. They, you know, one of their um, uh, ways of um, uh, taking something away is uh, taking the te television away and then it's known as they're on basic. So all the prisoners think I live on basic because I... <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I do a lot of work in is, uh, especially people, because everybody's busy, but, you know, time is uh, good to us. No matter where we live, we have the same amount of time, you know, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, etc., etc. So it's not that we don't have the time. It's about the prioritising of the time that we have. So 
putting yourself in a priority spot. Most people, if they make arrangements with a friend or a family member, they will stick, they will move hell and high water to get there. But if it's a promise to themselves, oh, I can catch that later, or I'll make up for it, or I'll do it a, a, another day. So one of my things that I work a lot with is the amount of time you spend on the outside of your body, you spend on the inside of your body. So every day you shower, you may wash your hair, you, you clean your teeth. So probably we're looking at easily sort of 15, 20, 20 minutes. So if you're doing that on the outside, by doing that on a regular basis, because the uh, consistency is your important thing. You know, a lot of people yeah. I know go, well, used to go to big conferences, yeah, because they like the experience of the conference. So they'd maybe go once every couple of years, three years, uh, and they'd expect this mm -hmm. to last them for another three years until they go back to the next one. But you wouldn't expect to wash or shower or clean your teeth once every three years, you know, or once a year or once a month or, you know, once a week, you expect to do it on a regular basis. So, I, you know, the difference of the concept, if we do as much inside as we do on the outside, and it only has to be small amounts. It don't, you know, people say, oh, well, I have to do a whole day or this. No, you don't. You do that when you haven't done anything for so long and you're, you're, you try to play catch up. So just mm. small single day and the difference is incredible i love that tip i absolutely love that tip spend on your inside of you as much time as you spend outside of you and you're right you're right we look after everything rather ourselves and and very often i look at this i'm not sure what's your opinion this linda but i look at this as almost like people are running away they don't want to witness what's within themselves they don't want to witness those inner demons they don't want to witness that shadow self right because it's very nice to say oh i'm this i'm that person in terms of positives but who wants to witness i am procrastinator i yeah, let myself down nobody sorry i mean most people don't actually look at the positives unless they cultivate no. that you know how many people have mirrors in their house and never never look in the mirror or stop, they even get to the point where they avoid looking in the mirror, other than, you know, if you're a lady, you may put a bit of makeup on, maybe, if you got to the stage where you're not even put, put uh, putting makeup on or getting dressed or something like this, or um, for a guy, if he's shaving, he might give up and just grow a beard. Yeah. So mm. it's uh, about looking at yourself as being as important. It's not egoistic, but an awful lot of people are people pleasers. So putting people in front of themselves rather than, you know, doing their own thing that they want. If you're saying yes to somebody else and you're saying no to yourself, then you're holding yourself back. And the thing is, over time, we get isolated, we get resentful, we get uh, hurt. But at the end of the day, if you are not showing others what you are worth, what your boundaries are, what you will accept, if you just shut up and put up, they're going to keep doing it because you know we don't have visible barriers around us. We don't have frontiers and passports and things like this to say, right, you know, you've overstepped the mark. We have to enforce that. We have to show that. And if we don't do it, how do they know where it is? So the really important thing is, you know, connecting with yourself, knowing what you want, put your boundaries. And what's not acceptable, you have to uh, reinforce that. And also, this is the lesson you're teaching others, whether you're a team leader, whether you're a manager, whether you're an owner, whether you're a parent, it's, you can't do to other people, you know, do as I, I say and not as I do. Because if you're telling them to care for themselves, to you know, make sure that you know, they sleep well, they eat well, all the things they should be doing, and you're not doing it, you know, where, where's that comparison come? So... Being a product of your product, so what you're saying is really important because without it, you've got no, no, no strength there. You've got no power behind you. So just taking that time, you are actually then reinforcing and showing others, and then they know what's acceptable, and they can do that themselves because if not, they're going to follow your pattern. And when they get into bad relationships, they get into you know bad jobs, they get all sorts of things. And then you think, oh, where's that come from? Well, hey, this is, mm. is acceptable. 
Wow, you just said something so profound and I think so many people needed to hear this message. When you set up your own boundaries, you set up an example to other people to have their own boundaries. And when you don't, then they follow your pattern of lack of self-love, lack of self-respect. I love that, Linda, and I think people needed to hear that. I remember once I was working with a client and she, we were both horrified when we found out this, she used to spend... 26 hours in a week, in seven days, 26 hours, she was spending helping other people for free, for free, friends around, up and down, with no charge, you know, with no extra, no, with no extra income for her, doing things for people all the time. And she was saying, Olga, I would love to work full time, but I don't have the time. And that was just the perfect example of how you just have to prioritize yourself so you can help others but the question is how do we set boundaries how do we do it well i say it, it comes to reconnecting with yourself so you've got your reconnect mm -hmm. you've, you've outlined of what you want in your life and then it's about redefining so for the things you want in your life defining what is acceptable for example, I worked a lot in prisons and I was never brought up in an atmosphere where people were, were swearing as natural language. But one of my things in the prison was you know, when we're working together, you don't swear and you certainly don't swear at me. Yeah? And at first the, you know, there's pushback and there's, oh, this is just how we uh, talk. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it's not. This is how you've become accustomed to behaving because people around you behave in the same way. So I, uh, in time, they didn't swear. And because uh, some of the group programs were rolling programs, you know, as people were coming in, they were actually moderating it themselves. So until you actually put the boundaries in, people don't know. And then you have uh, increased your self-esteem, you improve your self-confidence, because all of your boundaries are saying who you are, what your values are. What is acceptable? And yes, you know, change does bring on changes of people, changes of places, changes of jobs. But let's face it, we've all been in a situation where we've been in a job too long, we've been in a relationship too long, we, you know, we've done something for too long when we've known inside, you know, I should be out of this by now. But we just cling mm -hmm. on with our nails and say, no, we, you know. So stop putting it off and say, if it's not right for you, then change it. Yes. We do sometimes leave people behind, but that's their journey. And one of my clients actually put it very well. When she started working with me, she thought she would on the verge of a divorce or at least splitting up. She had huge problems with a teenage son and she was in, in pieces. So she got on and started doing her own journey and feeling better and putting her boundaries. She wasn't so naggy with her uh, teenager. It was about wanting to take responsibility for this. You know, with, with her husband, she started making a bit more time and, and doing things. So in the end, they got on the journey with her. So she's it's a bit like a bus and you get on at different stops. Now, they can either choose to get on or not. That's their choice. But you can't force somebody to do it. So when you start, it's about, you know, people will come along with you. If they don't... You know, just, just think back in your life. When you were at school, the friends you had then probably are not your friends now. Or the first love, you know, when it broke up, oh, my gosh, I'm so tired. I'm never going to love again. You know, the world has ended. But it's not. You know, we move on. And, you know, we can look back with good memories, you know, but when you live in that moment and you don't grow from it, that's where you stay. And when you stagnate, mm -hmm. It's really hard. You feel out of sync. So moving forward is always the way. And people will come with you or you will bring to you the people that are going on that journey that want those things too. And they're the people that you want to be around, not the people that are pulling you back and sticking in the mud. Very, very, very true. And as you said earlier on, sometimes you progressing with your journey and leaving them behind is part of their journey. You not being there for them to listen to their moaning and complaining or whatever else, for them not being willing to grow, you showing example of growth will be their extra kick and extra push. I'm not sure if you've ever heard this phrase, but we Russians, we say that hedgehog is a very proud bird. It doesn't fly until you kick it. 
<laughs> it's, That's a great one. Yeah. I know it's very, very bizarre quote, but maybe it's not the best translation, but that's exactly what we say, right? So, so sometimes your friend could be that hedgehog who doesn't want to fly, right? Unless you kick it. And that kick could be you stepping away. And that could be you progressing with your journey and setting up an example. And then they will follow your path. So yes, let's do that. Linda, you know, you are so packed with the knowledge and expertise. No wonder you wrote a book. And by the way, let me just share the name of the book. Do you want to tell us more about your book? Because I think that book is so important. It is caring for the caregiver and it is on the Amazon. I'll share the link to that up below the video. Please go ahead and get it. But could you please tell us more details about this book? Oh, yeah. Um, basically, my background, obviously, is criminal psychology. And when I had my big burn out, uh, I realised a very bitter pill was it never needed to happen. Even with all the knowledge I had, I was saying it, but I wasn't doing it and coming back to the boundaries again. So when I finally hit rock bottom, of uh, my daughter took a photograph of me and I didn't even recognise the person in the photograph. And uh, I was so far in denial because that's what we do. If somebody says, oh, you know, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm OK. And we just go along in this denial, this fog, thinking that we are we are managing and we're not. Emotionally, we're shut down. We have loads of uh, issues around us, but burying our head is much more comfortable because we don't have to deal with the fallout. So the book came about after my big burnout in 2005. Uh, I started working with other healthcare providers, key workers to prevent burnout to care for themselves as much as they're caring for other people. But obviously, in the world we're living see that so many people are doing to the point of where you know, people are doing things for other people uh, and not even go to the bathroom when they want to. So the book is basically a part of a trainings. Uh, that I do and uh, it's very proactive and in some of the chapters it does actually say don't move on to the next one till you've done this <laughs> so oh. it, it, it's quite yeah but it's also part of my life and my journey I'm very open about you know what happened to me and how it happened and uh, you know basically don't do what I did you know pick up yourself and it's for people who are proactive, that want to work on their own, that are willing to work through things on their own. Uh, if not, then obviously with the training, you get the support, extra support along the way as well. So, uh, yeah, it's quite insightful from, uh, from my point of view, but it's also very uh, classic in a, a training point of view. It all moves on and it fits together like a jigsaw. Wow, love that, love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I love that you were completely transparent and vulnerable within your book, uh, telling about your own journey, as you're saying, and you openly share your path so people don't have to make the same mistakes, but just learning from you. But that means you have to know Linda's path, right? You got to know what you did so you don't do that probably so you can avoid the burnout. <laughs> Powerful. Thank you so much, Linda. And also you said, uh, and you mentioned a few times, training. Could you please tell us more about how could you help people? So if people need some help, what help they can get from you and how they can get in touch with you? Fantastic. Thanks, Olga. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the website, which is a uh, open portal with loads of information on. And I'll keep everything simple because, uh, as I said at the beginning, techno wasn't my favourite subject. So uh, I kept it simple for me, so it's simple for everybody else. So the website is just lindasage.com in, in the name. And most of the social media is exactly the same as well. So uh, the training, yeah, I have... Um, a five-week course that uh, is about changing thoughts and ideas and getting you moving into your own action plan. We have a 26-week course that is uh, A to Z of building emotional resilience, and uh, that runs on. So you can start it at any time. It's not a start and finish course. You can it, come on and run. So there's video, there's email uh, support and a meeting a weekly meeting on that one as well. But just now, I have launched something special because I know that people at the moment are struggling. So it is a 90-minute with me, one-off, that we go from stuck to clarity 
to action and outcome. And then you have your follow up. So this is a special offer that's going out at the moment, uh, limited offer, because uh, now things are opening up, as I said before, about this anxiety. So we sit down and we can work through for you. And uh, as I said, limited offer at the moment. If more information on the website or you can get in touch with me and know more about it. But it's £97 for 90 minutes. So uh, that's a very good offer for my for the t what I usually charge for my time. So uh, uh, It is a bargain. It is a total bargain. Absolutely. And especially because people saved so much money through all these months for not going out for meals, not going for drinks and stuff like that. So I think this is the best time to invest into yourself, right? Whatever Linda charges, I think she should absolutely quadruple that fee and not to give it that cheap, right? But okay, it's too late. She already said it because if that'll be behind the scenes, I will say, Linda, are you crazy? But yes, I think it's a great gesture from yours, from your side, Linda, to actually give it away almost for free for people who actually are you know, really interested in working on themselves and really are committed to improve themselves rather than yabby yabby just talking, yes, maybe one day I will, but there is nobody to help me. Linda is the person you can go to now and you can work with her in order to level up yourself. Linda, I'm so grateful for your wisdom today. You know, every phrase you were saying was so spot on, full of expertise, full of wisdom, which I had no doubt you will bring into this show. Well, hence you are here already, gosh, multiple times. I don't know even how many times you've been in my show. I think three or four now. Yeah, and likewise. So we've we've got a, a, a radio show, a podcast coming up as well. So uh, that's true. Yeah. And I'm very excited. And I'm very, very excited. Well, today it was re-entering anxiety with Linda Show and myself at Olga's show. Thank you so much, everybody who was watching us. Please make sure you share this message with at least one person. Remember, your share will not cost you anything, but that will cost somebody else's saved life. Too many suicides, too many mental health issues we experienced in the society during the last month. So it will be wonderful to have you sharing some of this content with other people so more people can find out about Linda and her amazing work. I'll show the website again just there and also... Um, please check Linda's book, uh, Caring for the Caregiver, which is on Amazon. The link will be also below the video on across all platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and also LinkedIn. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching live show with us. And Linda, thank you so much for your precious and wonderful time and your amazing and vibrant energy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Olga, for uh, inviting me. It's always great to be with you. So it's like being energized with Olga always. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Linda. I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to be at your podcast very soon. We'll definitely keep posted about that. Thank you all and take care. See you next time.